Bam. Perfect. Oh, looking mean as hell. Yes. Hey, hey, guys. And welcome to the War Boss Show. Um, for this show, it's just hosted by myself. Yep, yeah, I know I'm not the face you was expecting to see on this one. Uh, our, our planned video for this week was obviously the Battle Wagon build-off video. Um, now, uh, that has been filmed, um, but there is still quite a bit of editing to do on that one. Um, so that will be coming to you next Sunday. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, you are stuck with the big deal himself, the main event, me. So I mean, whether it's a, you know, it, it, I think it, I think it's a plus, don't you? I think you know. Let's uh, yeah. So anyway, um, so what am I going to be talking about today? Um, well, I wanted to fill in. I didn't want to leave you guys without anything. Uh, the rest of the gits are busy at the moment with various projects and life and editing and everything else. Um, so I said I'd fill in and bring something to you guys today. And I thought, well, what? Obviously, we usually on this channel we usually do um, collaborate between us all. So you'd see, you know, all of us or some of us, and we'll discuss things and that. Um, so it feels a bit strange actually being on the channel just on my own. Um, might actually get a word in this time, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So what am I going to be talking about? Well. I'm going to be talking about the other gits, my co-hosts, um, and I thought it would be a great opportunity actually um, to talk about the guys, how I met them, um, and uh, our journey so far on this channel, um, and with the, the 40k community as a whole really, because um, I started this journey uh, a few years back now, um, round about the start of 8th edition on my channel. And since then, it's just been an amazing trip. I've met so many cool people in this hobby, um, multiple hobbies, the hobby of the hobby and the hobby of YouTube itself, which, you know, in itself is kind of a, a hobby. It certainly uses up quite a lot of time. Um, and I've just met so many, so many cool people and the five other war bosses, um, you know, probably more important than anyone else I've met in this hobby. They're, they're just sound guys. Um, I love them to bits. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure doing this channel with those guys. Um, and all the skills and strengths and qualities that e each of them bring to the channel. It's it's, it's really cool. I, I love doing my own channel. I love doing um, Six Bus Stevo. It's awesome. Uh, and there's a great amount of freedom in that because it's, you know, it's your your own channel. Um, when you've got a channel of your own, you can do whatever you want, anything you want. There's, there's no one to stop you. You know, um, you can. You know, it's a lot of freedom. Um, with a collaborative channel, uh, you don't get that same amount of freedom because you, you know you've all got to sort of be singing on the same hymn sheet, and you've all got to sort of decide what kind of episode you're going to be doing, what topics you're going to talk about, what what things you're going to be working on. Um, and who's going to do the editing, who's going to do the main recording, uh, who's going to host it, um, and who's going to create the thumbnail and sort all the different stuff out. Um, and we all kind of collaborate together and each of us, you know, take certain bits and to bring the show to you guys. Um, and it's just been an absolute pleasure from the beginning. Um, I remember when the show started out at the very beginning, actually. It's only very recently I watched our very first episode of the show, How We Started Orcs. And, uh, yeah, it, it was um, it was very cool because, uh, well, we'll get into that in a bit, actually. I'll talk about that because when I talk about the guys individually, I will sort of uh, touch touch on a few things with that. Um, and, oh, just to mention as well, like, this is the first time you're probably seeing... You usually see the camera from over there. Um, I'm actually filming this on my phone. Um, you're actually nestled into my wardrobe at the moment, balanced on a big pile of clothes, believe it or not, filming at my desk. I thought it'd be fun to see this side. So this is this is what I look at all the time. This is my hobby desk. This is the computer where I film on and stuff. And this is it. So you're seeing it from the other side, uh, which is cool. It's always a shame, really. I'm very limited on space, so I don't always get to have a, a nice backdrop. Um, but I thought I'd try this out for something a little different and see it from the other side. You're almost like behind the scenes here, um, which is cool, huh? Um, so, yeah, the other 
the other war bosses. Um, well, where do we start? The 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 first war boss I met, um, Skarna, Mr. Plastic Crack uh, himself, and I don't remember the the time. Um, sort of, I don't remember how long ago it was specifically, but it was quite early on into me doing my channel. I was probably about, I don't know, about six months into doing the channel, I guess. Um, I, I don't think the channel had even been going a year at this point. Um, I think I still had, you know, b below uh, a, th a thousand subs, uh, but the channel was doing well, and I, I was, I was, I was pleased with how it was going, and uh, I was very enthusiastic and cracking on and everything. And I know a few people from the YouTube community, Idik Beer being number one, I, I owe a huge amount to that man uh, because he um, he really gave me some great tips and advice and pointers in how to start out with YouTube and things. And uh, yeah, so um, huge, huge thanks to Nick um, from Idik Beer 40k, Necrons and more. Um, go and check that channel out if you can um, and he's been a great supporter of, of, of this channel that you're watching now and many others besides but yeah I was I was you know in the middle of doing my channel and creating stuff and things and uh, I got a message out of the blue from um, Skarna I think on uh, Facebook um, I think he probably found me through um, the Wargamers Unification group on Facebook. Go and check that group out. It's an awesome, awesome group. Um, and I think he probably found me through there and just sent a message. He'd seen a couple of my videos and things and uh, uh, being an Orc YouTuber himself and seeing another Orc YouTuber, he, he just reached out to me and said, like, J I can't remember exactly the specifics of the message, but he was just like, I've seen your channel. I like what you're doing. Um, you know, it'd be good to, you know, collaborate on something and, you know, just wish me a load of luck. And I thought that was really decent and nice. And, uh, so yeah, message back and we, and we got chatting and, uh, yeah, then we started, uh, I think I came and appeared on his show, um, in the old hobby hangouts that Scarno used to do. I'm going to post uh, links actually to the guy's individual channels as well because some of you might be subscribed to this channel but you might necessarily be subscribed to all of us. Uh, so there'll be links appearing throughout this video as I talk about each of the guys. Um, and uh, Scar's channel um, has taken a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a change of direction over the years. He was, he was purely orc based or at least primarily 40k orc based channel um, which has been going for years and I imagine I think I'm right in saying of all the war bosses Scar's channel has been going the longest um, I think it's over 10 years now um, his, his videos go way back and I think he started in the days when a video could only be 10 minutes maximum uh, so he was there right from the early days uh, and I can't imagine there are many others um, doing what he was doing back then um, and uh, yeah, I didn't actually, when he reached out to me, I didn't actually know um, about his channel. I hadn't discovered it yet. I hadn't found it. Um, but obviously after him messaging me and that, and then I went back and then found his channel and saw like his live videos um, and the things that he was doing. And, uh, you know, I had a huge back catalogue of videos to go back and watch and stuff. Um, and then, yeah, we started collaborating together um, and we very quickly... I uh, thought, well, we, we could do like a, a, a show together, like a like a podcast style show where we discuss like, you know, topics and things. Um, and uh, yeah, so we our very first episode that we did was uh, Prime Orc Pondering, um, which uh, we talked about, you know, uh, the, 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 the crook, the, the prime orcs and uh, the possible direction of where. Uh, the law could go um, with like orcs being like you know uh, not devolving, evolving back into their sort of prime form or something. Um, and we talked about that, but I remember the um, the sound mixing and stuff. Something went wrong with the sound on that one, so it wasn't. We weren't off to a great start, but the the content of the show itself was good. And and I, I do you know what I love collaborating with Scar and stuff like that. I love getting into these sort of deep dive conversations about things. Um, and, uh, yeah, we came up with the name of the show. Um, it just 
popped up in me one day. We're both bald. We do orcs. Um, uh, we just knobs, you know, knob knob gags are abound all the time. Um, and so we wanted to poke a bit of fun at ourselves and not take ourselves too seriously. Hence the name of the show, Two Bald Knobs. Um, it was catchy. It just sort of rolled off the tongue. It, it felt like a good name for a show. We, you know, um, and it was brilliant. It felt great to be um, not just doing stuff on my own, uh, but to collaborate with another like-minded orc player slash YouTuber. And uh, yeah, I've never looked back since, really. Um, and we've actually just um, got back into doing the show. It's been about two years since we did the last episode, give or take. I can't remember exactly, but it's around. It's a long time since we've last on the show. Uh, but very recently we did it, um, and there should be a link appearing for our most recent episode, which I highly recommend you go and watch. Um, and there'll be many more of them to come as well, because, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. And that was like, the Two Bald Knobs was really the start of this channel, this show that you're talking about. Um, it, it sort of, things have evolved very um, organically from that, because um, from doing that show, we then created the Facebook uh, group, which at the time was called the Two Bald Knobs, like Facebook group or, or something like that anyway. And it was pretty much just a way for us to promote our own content, but sort of encourage other Orc YouTubers and people that come in and share their work and, you know, go from there. Um, we pretty much sort of took the, the Nick Beer um, unification group um, and basically, you know, took that idea but made like a, an Orc focused version of that um, a thing where people could share their works and their creations whether that be videos or artwork or songs or or just the the, the models and things that they're working on the paint jobs whatever stories um, and just make a cool place where people could share that stuff and they wouldn't be sort of penalized for promoting themselves uh, businesses and things as well like if you there's you know companies creating like 3d prints or third party miniatures we want them to come on the on the uh into the york facebook group and uh come and share but yeah it was called the two bald knobs thing and later on that did change um but yeah it all kind of stemmed from there really because then we started gaining sort of uh attention from elsewhere um with other orc youtubers which we'll get into soon but yes yeah, scar is um uh he's I, I he's a top class guy he's he's an absolute quality guy i you'd be hard pressed to find anyone more genuine uh more straight up straight down the line says it as it is talks to you straight um he's just always on hand um, he's just been over the years since I've known Scar. He's just been a bloody good mate, um, a really, really good mate. He's been there in times of need to have a chat to when shit, you know, life's getting hard. Um, he's been there for advice um, and tips and feedback on my channel, on the the joint channel, on the show, and everything. It's it's been fantastic. Um, he's given me some cool stuff over the years. Actually, I've got just over there on the bookshelf. He gave me um, uh, the BattleTech. Uh, books um, you know he's always on that uh, you know as as most of you watching this right now will know he's always promoting the old uh, battle deck um, and getting everyone into that um, and I had my first ever game of that with him and he provided me with the, uh, the my, my mechs as well um, you will see one day that battle report that we filmed um, we filmed it uh, about a year and a half ago now um, and eventually he'll get round to uploading that battle report on his channel I'm sure um, but yeah, he basically taught me how to play Battletech, got me into it and, and showed me that stuff. So that was really cool. And it's Battletech has been a kind of a, a nice, um, palette cleanser from 40k and orcs. Uh, cause I love 40k and I love orcs. Uh, but sometimes you can get a bit burnt out with stuff and you might want something just a little different just to sort of, you know, break it up a little bit. And Battletech's great for that. Um, they're great fun miniatures to paint and stuff. But yeah, so his, his channel has taken a bit of a um, uh, a change uh, over the years. Um, fr from sort of like 40k and stuff and Orcs, he, he, for a while I think Scar had sort of fallen out of love for it. Didn't like the direction it was going in, the direction the game was going in, the way the kits had sort of changed and stuff, uh, the lore direction. You know, we've, we've gone over it a lot in the channel. Um, 
and uh, he got really into Battletech in a big way. And his channel since then has kind of evolved from an orc based channel into far more Battletech. Um, and I think now um, he's fully, fully focused on Battletech. But if you, if any of you watching this now are into Battletech, then go and check his channel out because there's loads, loads and loads of Battletech content on there. Um, and I think over the coming years, you will see a lot more um, interest in Battletech content and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, go and check his channel out. Check his channel out for as well his hobby hangouts, which I hope... I hope, Scar, if you're watching this, I hope you revisit them soon. Uh, because Scar always used to, every two weeks, would do a hobby hangout. Uh, and it would be with, quite often, just a member of the community um, or um, another YouTuber in the hobby, whether that be Orc-based or Battletech-based or anything else. Um, and he's done interviews and things with people. And Scar is probably, of all of us, the best person for interviews um, and chatting to people because unlike most of the rest of us um, he lets them get a word in edgeways um, and actually let them do most of the talking and sort of he's very good at drawing that information out of people and things and uh, he sort of plays um, devil's advocate with various topics and stuff and uh, comes at things with a very open mind um, and uh, yeah has a really good interview technique actually um, and his hobby hangouts were always fantastic to watch. Um, just nice, you could hobby along with him and his guest, um, which was quite often me, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, in fact, <laughs> I tended to, I tended to be the guest, um, or Dim, uh, me or Dim would tend to be like the, the stand-in guest if he didn't have anyone more interesting or you know, elsewhere. Uh, we were always there like, right, we'll fill in if you can't get anyone, you know, interesting for the show. Oh, I'm sure sometimes the viewers watch will be like, oh, not this guy again. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they were they were great fun and very interactive with the audience. Um, during those hobby hangouts, uh, Scar would get the viewers watching to share what they were working on during the hangout in the Discord and then share them at the end of the Discord. That was always good fun as well. So there was a real interactivity there with the audience watching. Um, so yeah, really good. But um, a highlight of Scar's channel that I want to... Um, bring to your attention and pop a link up for you to go and check out. There'll be links for all this down in the description as well. But it's um, we're coming to that time of year again where he's going to be doing it again, actually, is his Battletech um, Advent Calendar playlist. Uh, now, he does this every year now. I think he started like two years ago. Um, and over the uh, 25 days you know, leading up to Christmas, uh, he'll release a video a day doing a, a blind unboxing of a mystery mech for Battletech. Um, and then uh, he'll take it out and he'll, he'll sort of review it, go over its, um, I don't know if data card is the right word, but you know it's equivalent of a data card and go over its rules and things and show off the miniature and talk about it. Um, and it's all done with Scar in a festive jumper and usually a festive hat. There's some nice Christmas music going on in the background. And I'll tell you what, in watching them every day um, over the Christmas period, um, if you're having trouble getting in that festive mindset, then watch them because that you've got the sort of quiet sleigh bells jingling in the background and Christmas music going. He's there in his Christmas jumper, unboxing his his goodies like he's just you know found a load of battle deck under the Christmas tree and he's all excited and it's it's awesome. It really gets you like festive. So. Yeah, I'm going to be, each of the war bosses I'll talk about, I want to sort of highlight, sort of just a, a highlight of their channels, their individual channels for you to go and check out. And for most most cases, it will be a video. But for Scar, I'll go more for a playlist. Um, so go and check out like the old playlist and be ready this December uh, because he'll be doing it again this year. And uh, yeah, it gets you in the festive mood. Um, even if you're not really into Battletech that much, you know, um, or if you're curious if you just sort of, you know, you're like, oh, I keep hearing about this battle tech, what's it all about? Go and check it out. Um, if you want to see the orc content that he used to do on his channel, you'd have to scroll back a lot further. Because um, it's been a while since he's done that, actually. Um, but there was some good stuff in there. He did a great um, sort of unboxing video of, like, Gork and Morka. Um, so there's a, few, there's a few good bits in there to go and check out. Um, but, yeah. Scar, um, I sort of uh, think of as like with me and him, we're kind of like the, 
the 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 OG sort of war bosses sort of thing because um, two bald knobs almost sort of became the war boss show um, later on um, and yeah I wasn't the only one that appeared on Scar's channel on them hobby hangouts there was another character that used to appear on them regularly that I didn't know um, I, I I I I knew nothing of. Um, and this is, of course, uh, Dim Reaper, a.k.a. The Hobby Git. Um, now, Dim used to appear on the channel um, about as regular as I did uh, on Scar's channel for them hobby hangouts. Perhaps even a bit more, actually. Um, now, <laughs> I during this time, I was really enthusiastic. I'd, I'd left the hobby... Um, at the sort of tail end of 5th edition um, and skipped 6th and 7th almost entirely really kept sort of an eye on it but was out I'd sold almost off grab it so when I got back in just before 8th hit um, I sort of got wrapped up in the hype train of 8th you know big rebranding and re sort of jigging of the game a, a very you know for the first time in, in years since I'd been in a hobby it was such a drastic change to the game and everything and it, it drew me back in and so you know, in them early years, I was so enthusiastic and so excited for everything, you know, 40k and orc related. Um, Dim, <laughs> on the other hand, slightly, just ever so slightly more pessimistic um, and sceptical of Games Workshop and 40k and orcs um, in general. And uh, yeah, so I used to find myself watching the hobby hangouts when I wasn't on them and, you know, with the various guests and the dim kept reappearing. And I remember thinking like, God, this guy's so fucking miserable. Does he like anything? <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, he was. <laughs> yeah, dim would like there would be like some new kit that had come out. that I thought, oh, wow, that's really cool. And dim would be on there going, no, it's just awful. It's the worst thing ever. It's terrible. I hate it. And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? It looks really cool. Um, and we would quite often get into debates in the comments because it was a live show. Um, so sometimes I would get in there and type away and sort of debate with him a bit. And he would do the same when I was on there. And every now and again, there'd be like a little remark made or whatever. And Scar would go, oh, yeah, we talked about this you know, on the last show. And, you know, there was you know, some people got it. And Dim would be like, oh, right, Steve-O, yeah, he liked it, I bet, didn't he? And I'm like, what's this guy's problem? <laughs> So we clearly didn't see eye to eye on a lot at all. Um, but then at some point, um, it came up to um, wanting to do... Scar wanted to get like more of us on the show together. Um, that being myself, Dim and Dread. And this was where we started off with the Warboss show. Now, I think... The very first one, I, I now I, the war boss have to correct me if I'm wrong here. I should have I should have researched this actually before I started recording. Um, I believe we did sort of almost like a uh, what do they call it, like a pilot episode. I think on Scar's channel, I believe anyway. Or I don't know if we went straight into doing the show. I think we did a, he did a hobby hangout with the three of us on there with him, and there was a bit of hype amongst the community um, because. The, a lot of viewers had been watching Scar for quite a long time, so they'd seen Dim and they'd seen me, and they'd sort of seen the sort of the, the, the you know the debates we'd be getting into. And I'm Mister Positivity, I'm Mister Excited, I'm so enthusiastic, I'm excitedly covering all the news every day in the upcoming releases for codexes and miniatures and stuff, and I'm just you know excited. And Dim is obviously pouring sort of scepticism and scorn on on all of it. So the viewers were quite excited when we started promoting this, saying like, "Well, we're gonna." Dim and Steve are going to be appearing on on the the hobby hangout at the same time, and so people are like, "Oh, this is going to be good. We're going to watch them arguing and stuff." Um, and that didn't happen. We actually got on really well, um, and it, it was fun and it was a laugh. And uh, I think we probably disappointed a lot of the audience actually because they were sort of hoping that we'd be sort of tearing lumps off each other and just arguing and debating, which we do sometimes. But um, no, do you know what? Um, Oh, I love Dim to bits. Dim, Dim's he, he's he's a big pussycat, really. He, he's he's just a big, big, big lovable teddy bear. Um, he really is. He's uh, <laughs> he is grumpy at times, yeah. 
Um, it's, it, it, he's grumpy in terms of when it comes to the hobby, but um, it's been sort of remarked on sometimes that that's uh, you know he's just oh he you know he just hates everything. And that. But it, it it really does come from a place of love. Actually, it comes from because he's he's seen this hobby that he loves, and I do actually share a lot of his views on things and that. Uh, the direction that the game's gone in, the, the focus on the competitive play, the focus on kits being far less poseable and multiple choice now um, and far more expensive as well. Uh, and the, the constant changes to the game and stuff. I mean, you know yourself, I've, I've talked about it on my channel and this channel a lot. So we do actually share a lot of the same views on things. Uh, we'll disagree on certain miniatures and stuff like Dim detests the Gorkonaut. I think the Gorkonaut's a fantastic miniature and I love it. Um, but it does look like a wardrobe on legs. Um, but I don't mind that because I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, it comes from a place of love because it's um, it means a lot to Dim, this hobby, this 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 uh, the orcs and, and, and grots and stuff. It means a lot. So when you see it taking the direction that kind of loses a lot of the charm and stuff that you 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 got so many fond memories of it 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 does great and it's seeing something you love changed and taken in a direction you don't like it, it is going to rub you up the wrong way um now dim's channel dim's channel is uh doesn't have a huge amount of subscribers um and that is only because of the fact that Dim hasn't made a huge amount of content on his channel. Um, in fact, I think um, the, the Warboss channel, possibly, I might be right in saying this, Dim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Warboss channel is actually older than Dim's channel. I think I'm right in saying that he started his channel after the Warboss and started doing you know, something of his own as well. Um, and he's created some really good stuff on there. Um, there's one video in particular that I have to point you all towards is his um, Squigoth video, which um, it, it's kind of titled in wrong, really, because it's titled the um, uh, Cromlech Squigoth or Norzilla versus the Forge World Squigoth, and he's he's doing a comparison uh, with the Squigoths, you know, deciding which kit is better, which miniature is better, which one he likes more, um, and it's a really in-depth sort of review slash comparison, but it's so much more than that. Because not only that, does he, he looks at other um, companies that produce them, other ways you can create your squig off on a budget. So like by from using like toy dinosaurs and things um, and, you know, various ways that people can create a squig off or build a squig off or scratch build or kit bash one uh, or buy one of the potential ones that's out there on the market. And it was just an awesome, awesome in-depth review of it. Now, I got that Cromlech Norzilla around the same time, and I did a review of it, which was, I don't know, a 10, 20-minute video, just reviewing the miniature and just me gushing praise over this thing because I do love it. It's a stunning miniature. Um, and he came out with this this video um, that was, like, uh, well over an hour long. But, my God, um, just the the quintessential squig off video if you want to learn about squig off miniatures and all the different options open to you go and check that video out there'll be a link appearing hopefully if i've remembered to do it but go and check that out um it's actually one that dim himself is very self-critical of and i have no idea why absolutely no idea why it is his best video and it's a really, really good video. And anyone showing any interest in Squig Offs, I'm like, well, that's go and watch that. Go and watch that now because uh, that's a really, really good um, sort of consumer focused video. Um, it's fantastic. And I mean, Dim's been in this hobby for years and he knows his stuff. Um, he's also done some really good stuff with uh, green stuff. Um, He's done a lot of sort of showing how to make sort of fur and things and green stuff and things. And uh, yeah, it's um, he's got some good stuff there. And he, he, he's, he's give him some green stuff or some brown stuff or some milly putt or something. And he creates some cool stuff. Um, yeah. And he he's always his creations, his kit bashes and stuff are always very quirky and very, very characterful. He, he brings a lot of sort of second edition flavor to his kit bashes and conversions, which I absolutely love. They've got a sort of a, a retro charm to them. Um, if any of you watched the uh, Squig Buggy build off 
you'll remember is um, is Squig Buggy, uh, which was really really cool and very characterful, and just just awesome. Um, but yeah, Dim is uh, fantastic, um, and the show would not simply would not work without him. It just wouldn't, because if you've got a show where you've got four people on there that all agree. Um, it's just an echo chamber. There's not been interest in that. And I think the fact that all the war bosses will, will, will all disagree with each other and have different views and opinions on things. And I think that's important. And I think healthy debate is good. It's something that we don't, not just in the hobby, just in life. Healthy debate is is under threat because too many people like to fall out because they disagree on something, whether that be you know, their politics or their views on anything or wherever they come from in life or, or whatever, or even in the hobby, you know. Um, someone likes 10th edition 40k, someone hates it, and then they fall out over it. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, whereas we can disagree and we can debate and we can argue and things, and, uh, you know, sometimes it will get passionate. Um, but that's, I think that's a good thing, and I think that's a positive thing for our channel. And I think me and Dim are very much quite off, quite often on opposite ends of the spectrum on that. Um, and I think that only works in the show's favour. So yeah, the show could just definitely not work without Dim. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, I <laughs> admittedly, when I f I didn't think me and Dim would get on. I didn't think um, we would. I think I felt like. Um, being brutally honest, I think in the early days I felt like he would sort of almost judge me and sort of label me a shill um, in some ways, which I, I can see why. In, in to be fair, um, and uh, but no, we got on really well, and uh, I think we we sort of uh, have the same sort of nostalgic fond memories and things um, of the hobby from those very early early days. Um, but yeah. Um, and he's so knowledgeable as well, Dim is. He's so knowledgeable of the lore um, and sort of retro hammer. Um, you know, he, he, he's, he, he's very good at sort of retaining that information. Um, whereas I, you know, I, I, I've known the information, but I've forgotten it. It, does, it doesn't, doesn't stay in this old noggin. Um, but yeah, and then we come to uh, the, the, the cocky git himself. Mr. Dread War Gaming, Dread, um, my my bitter rival. Uh, <laughs> um, Dread, oh, what can you say about Dread? So, I um, Dread. I first discovered Dread um, when it was at the time me and Scar were doing the two ball knobs, and um, we were doing our channels and things. Um, and then uh, this new New Orc channel came up out of nowhere with this guy, Dreadwire Gaming, introducing himself to the camera. Um, and uh, in that very first video, he gave a bit of a plug um, to uh, me and Scar and the Bald Knobs. And he said, I, you know, I like, you know, he's, he talked about a few different YouTubers and things that he liked to watch. And uh, he he sort of stated that um, he's, he'd watched our show and he, he would like to get involved in that and everything. And, uh, yeah, and I remember watching that going, oh, this, 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 oh, it's nice of him to mention us and plug us and stuff, and he wants to come and collaborate with us and things. And uh, so, yeah, and then he started producing sort of some, some content and things, and it, and it was good. It was good. Um, and I thought, geez, this, this guy's going to, he's going to go far. And I remember saying to Sky in them early days, I said, this guy, I said, he's going to overtake us on the views and that. He's, he's got something. I don't know what it is, but he's, he's, got something like that x factor or whatever he's got it um, but he actually sent me a letter I and mean, you can see it just over here on a post now i've got some bits stuck up on the wall here sort of fan mail um a few things that have been sent to me but yeah he sent me a uh yeah he said uh I, I, mean, I won't read the whole thing but he sent me a few bits which I just used actually for the first time the other day, one of them bits on me uh, feral orcs. But yeah, he sent me a bit with a couple of bits in there and and just, you know, said how much he's been enjoying the channel and uh, liking what I was doing and that he wants to sort of, you know, carry on his journey and uh, work with us. And so, yeah, we, we got in contact. I can't remember who reached out first, whether it was him or me or Scar. Um, but yeah. Um, and then we started sort of collaborating with him, and of course we came in and ended up doing that that Warboss show with the four of us, 
and then we were off and running. Now, Dread, um, to talk about myself being enthusiastic, um, Dread's enthusiasm <laughs> can be, um, uh, yeah, it's, um, I mean, in the let, let's just save you as a peek behind the curtain. In the very early days, uh, we all had different ideas of the direction the show, this channel, should go in. Um, and yeah, it almost didn't get off the ground because Dredd was just, uh, you know, he had his ideas and he was, he, he, you know, when Dredd gets an idea and he knows the direction it should go in, he, he will hammer that home constantly. Uh, whereas the rest of us are a little bit more um, restrained um, in, in just what we're capable of doing, what we've got the resources for, you know, what we've got the equipment for, the time for. And everything dread's got really grand grandiose ideas and stuff which are fantastic ideas you know that none of the ideas are shit well maybe a couple of them were but uh most of the ideas are really good and my answer to most of his ideas in my days was dread that's an amazing idea i love that and that'd be brilliant there's no fucking way we can do it um <laughs> we don't have the time we don't have the money we haven't got the equipment or whatever you know we for whatever reason Maybe further down the line, but we're, we're just not going to be a deal. We need to make it realistic. We've, you know, we've all got jobs and families and things, and uh, so we are limited to what we're capable of doing. It's not like this is like a, a career for us. It's like a, it's a hobby, you know. Um, but yeah, his, his his ideas and stuff are great, and he dread brings in the sort of the the wild card element to the War Boss show, um, and uh, yeah. Um, He's, he's just he's just quality. He brings in the the energy and the excitement and that orcish energy that again you couldn't do the show without dread. You, you just couldn't. It wouldn't be the same um, at all. And uh, again, I, I love that aspect that each of us brings something different to the table. Um, and and yeah, dread just he had to be a part of the show. He, he had to be. And dread's very community focused very community focused um so he was really really keen for us to sort of involve the community with the show um and with the the facebook groups and things now dread used to have his own facebook page uh the dread wire gaming facebook group um, which itself was doing really really well and getting a lot of um people um members joined up to it and everything um and so at some point we sort of rebranded we changed the bald knobs thing to the 40k alt community. Um, Dread closed down his Facebook group and got everyone to move over to ours, uh, and we sort of so we merged everything into one package, and it, it stopped being just the two bald knobs thing. It was too focused on us, and we wanted to push it out there to the community. It's, it's, it's your Facebook group, you know. We run it, but. We want you guys to be involved. We want you guys to promote yourselves and join in and share things with us and interact with us and stuff. And and it's been we haven't looked back since then. I think the group is now just about to hit like seven thousand members. Um, and every single day, without fail, I scroll through that group and see like amazing stuff created there. And Dread Dread played a huge part in that. Um, and he's been a big advocate of you know pushing that stuff. He's certainly pushed the Instagram side of things and then we've got the 40k community on instagram which i barely have any involvement with at all because i just don't really do instagram um but he, he's he's sort of been very focused on that side of things um and then of course we've got the discord as well which uh, was scars baby that started out as scars discord and you know he he um is the owner of that um and that di the discord has just a, been a great place to hang out and stuff um, all these links are down below, guys. If you want to be a member of any of these groups, the Discord, the Facebook group, the, the Instagram, go and check out the links and get involved because you will be inspired on a daily basis. Trust me, there's amazing stuff going on. Um, but yeah, Dred's, Dred's um, channel, um, well, just, yeah, like I said, from the very first moment of seeing it, from his first video, I just knew, I knew this guy is going somewhere. Now, circumstances in life, um, a big move and stuff has made his channel very, very quiet of late. Um, and so it's sort of stagnated and just sort of, he hasn't done anything with it. I mean, I'm sure it, it's going to 
come back in a big way soon and I really hope it does because um, if you go back and watch the videos that he was making uh, they're exceptional they're exceptional um, he was doing something very very different it, he wouldn't just do like a review of a miniature or showcase a miniature and stuff like, like I do on my channel um, each episode was like a show like a like an orc show where he would talk about the news he would see he would talk about a particular topic uh, then he might go in and show what he's been working on on the bench um, that week and then um, he will then get pictures and stuff from the community um, that have sent into him to show off their work and things on a particular thing um, and it was just fantastic he really captured, um, if you're like Generation X like me or whatever, or of a certain age, you'll remember like 90s kids TV and stuff, and it, it had that vibe about it. It was like a show, you know, with different segments in it, covering different topics and stuff, and it was just really, really, really good stuff. Um, really slickly put together, loads of thought into it, great energy on camera, and then fantastic skills with the stuff he was creating um, and like how to guides and stuff. And it was just brilliant. And, you know, I think if he had carried on with that um, and hopefully he will revisit this thing at some point in the future. If he'd carried on with that as a weekly format show, I mean, the views on that would be like skyrocketed by now. Um, but, yeah, his channel is fucking awesome. And um, if only he'd had more time. Um, and sort of life events hadn't got in the way, I'm fairly confident that he would have probably surpassed me in views and subscribers by now um, because he's, he's that good. <laughs> I fucking, I hate the fact that I've said that on camera. I'm never going to hear the end of that now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm still the big deal, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, he's that very good. And in particular, I want to I want to recommend you guys a particular video of his that can go back. That is a very evergreen content that is just as applicable now as as it was. Um, go back and check out his two part series on Grot Tanks. Hopefully, you're seeing a link for that. Um, but much like Dim's Squig Off video, he doesn't just review some Grot Tanks. Um, he reviews all the Grot Tanks. Like we're talking Forge World, Max Mini, Cromlech. Other ones, I think Ramshackle, um, I can't even remember now, but a lot of them. Um, and shows how all these different Grot Tank kits from all these different companies, you can mish -mash, mix and match them all together to come up with almost limitless Grot Tank variations and creations. Um, and then again, went one step further and start looking at like how you can kit bash them out of bits from other kits, how you can do them on the cheap, how you can scratch build them. How, you know, and yeah, if you have any interest in wanting to add some Grot Tanks to your army and you want to do something a bit different, a bit unique, go and watch that. Um, absolutely fantastic two-part series. Um, and it's incredible. Um, really, really good stuff. Uh, go and check it out. It's just, it's entertaining. It's informative. It's fun. Um, it's easy watching. Uh, go and check it out. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I know Dread is a shameless, shameless self-promoter and is his own biggest fan. Um, but, you know, he, he does have a little bit of something to back it up with because he creates some good shit. So actually, he's not just talking out of his ass. He does that too. But, you know, go and check out his channel. Um, yeah, definitely. And that was it. That was the that was the War Boss show. That was the four of us, and we went on and carried on making our monthly show, and did, we did some lives, and then we had guests on and stuff, and it was great fun, and we were loving life, and it was brilliant. Um, and then through lockdown and stuff, I think it all helped keep us sane. Um, and through that, we met other members of the community. We had other people come in and guest on the show. Um, we had um, like the Kaiser from Modeling from Advantage come and uh, guest on the show. We had uh, Roxy the Riveter come and guest on the show. Uh, we've had the Mad Doc, Tom. Uh, Tom is very much sort of more behind the scenes. Um, and Tom's uh, Tom plays um, uh, the role of sort of, he's an admin for the 40K Orc community uh, um, and the Facebook group. Um, and he his main sort of thing that he does is on the Discord, 
Uh, Tom pretty much runs like monthly uh, competitions or uh, yeah, competitions um, and uh, build alongs and projects and things in the Discord. Um, and he's just been fantastic at that um, in terms of getting the community involved in doing like various projects. Like we get November um, and um, I can't even remember them now, but he does an annual Gargan build off. So he gets the community really excited about scratch building and converting and kit bashing their own stompers and Gargants and stuff. Um, all in honour of uh, Garzinski, um, a, 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 another um, friend of the channel who sadly passed away and so does those um, competitions annually um, to honour his memory, uh, which is fantastic, fantastic. It's a nice work there, Tom. Um, and Tom, thanks for everything you do in the Discord and on the 40k or community. It doesn't go unnoticed. Um, and yes, yeah, so, but he guested on the show as well. And we had other guests on the show as well. We had um, two other guests um, that had appeared on the show. Um, that being um, Essex Boys and um, Sydney, the Drunken Orc. Um, two other channels which came around and became really good friends of the channel and, uh, and would hang out with us in the Discord. And I think uh, Sid had appeared on my channel um, as a guest. And um, yeah... Um, so where do we start then? Because I don't remember what order I met these guys in. Um, I don't remember meeting Essex. And I don't remember first discovering Essex. Um, I do know that his channel had been going a long time before I discovered it. Um, but I just, I don't, yeah, I don't, I just don't remember the moment going, oh, new old channel and seeing. But what I can tell you was that his channel inspired the hell out of me. Um, a great fun channel. Um, and uh, just clear to see that Essex was such a creative um, person that was just had this amazing love for all things Orky and Ramshackle and just leaned into this sort of dirty, down, washed out, rusted, scrap pile, things cobbled together um, look. And his kit bashes and his conversions and his scratch builds are, are just beautiful. Um, and they keep getting better all the time. Um, but he's just a very, um, of all the war bosses... <laughs> Clearly the most quiet. I think that's mostly because he doesn't get a word in with the rest of us. Um, <laughs> but um, quite possibly one of the most productive members of the War Boss channel. Um, yeah, uh, his his stuff's incredible. The, the speed at which he gets the stuff created um, and made is, is exceptional. Um, it really, really is. Um, I've had some great battle reports of Essex. Um, and yeah, it, it, his channel's great. Now, there's, in terms of Essex videos, one to recommend to you. Um, there's loads to recommend. Just go and check out his channel right now and look at all his videos. But if I was to pick just one off the top of my head, um, I would say like his one of like doing like the shipping container terrain. Um, because it just shows how cheaply and how simply you can create some stunning terrain out of nothing more than some cardboard boxes uh, for the most part and a few bits from your bits box. Um, and he creates really cool terrain. I mean, you've only got to see his, big, his Blood Bowl stadium um, to just be wowed at the level of creativity and, and uh, craftsmanship that you got there. Um, and done so cheaply. And so, you know, once he shows you how he does certain things now, which he shows on the videos and things, step-by-step -step sort of guides on how he creates stuff, you see, like, well, I could do that. I could do that. Um, you know, just some simple techniques to get some beautiful rust effects. I think, like, Essex is, like, he creates some lovely, rusty, battered, worn down metals and things and he, he, I think that's the sort of thing I take from Essex the most actually in, in his in his painting um, just how sort of he gets that really grimy battle worn rusted metal effects on all his stuff it's really 
really effective and really good. But yeah, check that video out of him making some shipping container terrain for his orcs, complete with a gun shop um, and everything. Um, and it, yeah, his stuff's awesome. He puts like little signs on, he puts graffiti on there and he puts like price lists in there and how much teeth things cost and he's got signs and sponsors like in his blood bowl stadium he's got sponsors and he's got you know he's printed off like everyone's channel logos and put them up there like their sponsors and stuff genius so good he, he he really has some fun with the stuff he makes and he definitely injects that fun into the orcs and it's just uh you can't help but be inspired. You can't help but see that Blood Bowl stadium and immediately want to play some Blood Bowl. You can't help see his terrain and not want to have a game on that board in amongst that terrain. Um, he's really, really good. So I think terrain-wise is his... Is, I wouldn't say is his main strength because he's got so many strengths because some of his... See his Beast Boss on Squigasaur conversion. Wow. Wow. Um, I can't even remember the thing he made that from, one of the fantasy kits, but it's um, it's exceptional. It really is. And he's done some incredible truck conversions as well. Um, but loads, loads of conversions and kit bashes, all with lovely paint jobs. Um, yeah, so, yeah, go and check out Essex, boys. Um, brilliant channel, brilliant channel. Um, you'll learn a lot, you'll be inspired, and, uh, yeah, you'll love it. Go and join him and Big Mech Mel and uh, check out that stuff. Um, also, he's a great cook. War boss meetups. Um, he, he likes to cook for the rest of the war bosses because uh, he's a qualified chef. Um, and damn, that boy can cook. Mm, I'm getting hungry now just thinking about it. Uh, and then the other, the last of the war bosses, but by no means least, um, one of the funniest people I've ever met um, is Sydney, the drunken orc. Um, whose channel should be called The Drunken Orc. It really annoys me that he put the. I'm like, it was very unorkish of him, Sid. So, Sid, if you please um, could rebrand your channel to The Drunken Orc, because it's just better than The Drunken Orc. Um, you know, the Northerner trying to speak all posh. Um, come on, it would be, be more orky of it. But yeah, The Drunken Orc. Again, I don't really remember the first time I saw the channel, discovered it. Um, but I remember thinking like, shit, like this guy's got some talent. Um, and that's, that's all I can think. That's the one word to describe Sid really is talent, um, in every aspect of the hobby and YouTube itself. Um, he kit bashes or, and, and scratch builds stuff just incredibly well like his creations are stunning so go and check out go and check out uh, one of his most recent videos um, where he converts the Maw Grunter I think it is from Age of Sigmar the big giant boar thing that's just come out for him um, no sooner had that come out than he's bought it cut it to pieces and converted it into a beast boss on Squigasaur had it painted and uploaded it in a video. Uh, now, he converted it beautifully and very quickly. Like, really quick. This thing was done so quick. And it's not just a simple, I'll stick a boss on top of it and call it that. It's like, he's gone extensive. Loads of plastic card work. Raiding bits from his big bits box. Lots of, like, filling and stuff with various bits. Um, loads of exceptional sort of work and skill gone into creating this stunning, stunning beast boss on Squigasaur. Um, then proceeded it to give it a, a beautiful paint job, um, which is really eye-catching, really pops. You know, some rusty colours and things, and then with some bright colours that pop out, and just so characterful. Um, yeah, painted beautifully. And again, exceptionally quickly. Like It felt like it was done almost overnight. Um, then not only does he create this stunning miniature, paint beautifully, then creates a brilliant video that is entertaining, amusing, um, educational, inspiring, 
um, just brilliant watching um, and has that video out. Um, so I think probably within a month of this kit being out, he's done something exceptional with it and created a brilliant video for it. Now, I highly, highly recommend anyone watching this, if you haven't seen that video yet, go and check it out and prepare to be inspired. But the, the, the true strength, the true strength in what Sid did there, though, because there's lots of people creating amazing stuff. Lots of people do really, really cool conversions and paint jobs and stuff and will show off their work, whether that be on Insta or Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And there's, there's loads of that. And you can look at this stuff sometimes and be like intimidated by it. You'd be like, that's amazing. Oh, I wish I could be that good. And you go away sort of feeling a bit of shit about yourself. That's not the case with Sid because he shows this stunning thing that in first you're like, wow, you know, I wish I was that good. But during the video, he shows you how he did it and shows you like some little tidbits of like just certain little elements of it, like oh, some piping and stuff. But he'll show you like, well, I got this garden wire and I put it in a bit of plastic card tube and then I cut another bit of tube and I did this. And you're like, oh, that's actually quite simple, isn't it? There's, that's actually quite easy to do. I could do that. So not only after watching it are you inspired and impressed by his work, but you also feel empowered and motivated and like you've learned something and you're like, oh, I, could have a, I could have a stab at that. I, I could, you know, not necessarily just copy the work, um, but just get some ideas and stuff on how to do certain bits. And you might be inspired in your own work and things. Um, so yeah, um, absolutely exceptional. Um, the guy um, definitely brings some credibility to the show um, because we're not all as productive as Sid. Um, and uh, I think he, he certainly, for my part, he motivates me. Um, I remembered in when we did the squig buggy build off competition, um, you're up against some stiff competition there, you know, um, up against, you know, all the other war bosses, all of them are creative and have their, their skills and stuff. And uh, it can be intimidating competing against them. Uh, but this, when we did that squig buggy, the very fact that my my truck conversion, I could sit it alongside the rest of the gits work. Um, and not be sort of uh, ashamed of it. Um, just the fact that it could be sort of mentioned in the same breath as their work. To me, that's just like a badge of honour. Like, yeah, I've, I've done good there. I'm proud of that. And I was very proud of that. Um, but yeah, and I think that's great. Members of the community that do amazing work like that should just be applauded. Because not only can they feel proud of their own work themselves and create this stuff, um, but it inspires others. And it inspires me. Um, you know, Sid and Essex's work regularly inspires me um uh it's it's just a shame that they they have the most rancid farts that i've ever even thought possible um the last meetup we had I mean, i'm lucky i got out of there alive to be honest i'm just just very fortunate that the uh the place we stayed had some good ventilation and big french doors that could open onto the balcony and let that air out because it was it was awful. I mean, if anyone had lit a match in there, it would have gone off like Hiroshima. Um, so yeah, I guess every you know, every silver lining has a cloud, doesn't it? Um, a toxic, rancid smelling cloud. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that though, amazing guys. And yeah, they they had to join the show. Um, we knew like we've got a lot of friends in the community, um, a lot of people that we get on really well with on the Discord and in Facebook and stuff. But we just knew, and we were very protective over the show. You know, we were very protective over the four of us. We were like, you know, it's our, our show. We don't want you know bringing anyone else into this. It, it's it's the four war bosses. It's us. It's you know. Um, but they just they just gelled. We just knew, um, and I think they'd started doing their own show, the Odd Boys which was really, really good. Um, but we just got on so well with them and they meshed with us so well. We were just like, you know what? We've got to reach out to the guys. We've got to reach out to them um, and get them to join the show. And yeah, they, they jumped at the chance and they were they were straight in with us. And so I got the uh, the characters sort of drawn up for them as well so they could properly fill in. And we haven't looked back since. And, and now we've got the six of us and it's fantastic. It's absolutely brilliant. 
Um, we then went on to sort of rebrand the show from being the, the war bosses of the apocalypse into just being like the war boss show. Um, and yeah. And now I feel like we're in like the a new sort of series of the show. The show's had a bit of rebranding and uh, a bit of a gap in between doing the show um, that we sort of rebranded it a bit. And now we've come back and with six of us, we can achieve more. Um, and we did originally when we did the show, we were like, we're going to get a video out for the first of every month. And that's we did stick to that for quite a while. And then we missed the odd couple and then life happens things get in the way one or two of us couldn't make it so we couldn't record um and eventually we reached we reached a point where we're like well there's six of us do we actually need all of us on every show and actually if someone's got some stuff going on in life or they're busy or whatever they, they can sit out and we don't need all of us to be on the show um and so that's what we've done from there onwards and now we're sort of, we're making it up to you guys rather than just getting one show a month if you're lucky um, we're trying to stick to this one show um, per per week, every Sunday, uh, every Sunday at nine o'clock. And so far, we've just about managed to stick to that. I think Dim missed the boat on one of the videos by about an hour, but we'll let him off. Um, and that's why you're seeing me here today, because I really want to try and stick to that promise to you guys of bringing you content um, every week. Um, and stay tuned next week because uh, when um, they show you that battle wagon build off, you're talking about inspiration. Um, the guys that did manage to complete that, you're going to be very impressed, guys. I've seen what they've produced. Um, and so in a week's time, you're going to see it as well. And you are going to be impressed and you are going to be inspired. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's exceptional stuff. Um, so yeah, really good. Um, I didn't really get involved in that. You'll see a little bit of me on that show because I didn't finish mine. Um, I show off where I got to with it, but yeah, I didn't finish mine. And the reason for that being is that i am uh, got some other projects on the go that you'll be seeing on the channel very soon because they're close to being finished um, and you'll be seeing them on the show soon. Um, on my channel, you'll be seeing them. Um, but yeah. I love I love doing this show, man. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love uh, I love I love all the shit that we've created together. I love you know seeing the stuff they create. I love you know sharing ideas with them, and collaboratively and stuff like the things we've we've done and filmed and stuff like the the show is yeah it's just been amazing. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, doing your own channel is amazing because you've got so much freedom and you can do whatever you want. And that is brilliant, and I never want to let that go. And I'll, you know, I'm going to carry on doing Six Months Steve, of course. And I love doing that show, um, but this show it, it's something special. Um, bringing in all the different ideas, I think, like together, we're, we're we're like stronger. We can create some really good stuff because we've all got our own individual skills and talents that we bring to it. Um, Dim and Sid usually the ones doing the editing on the side of things. I usually do the thumbnails. Um, we were all full of ideas and stuff, um, and uh, yeah, the, like some of the shows we've done over the years have just got real fond memories of, like doing the Christmas specials that we did with lots of other guests on. We had like nine of us on camera all at once, drinking. Um, what could go wrong? <laughs> um, the War Boss meet, obviously. Uh, the big battle report that we did, um, yeah. It's been awesome doing like the squig buggy build off was a really fun project to work on together. I want to do some more things with that. Um, uh, me and Dread just recently going up and visiting like the hobby stores around Hastings and stuff. That was that was a fantastic day, really good fun, and uh, that was a, a, a wicked video to do and bring you guys some different sort of content. And I think you'll be seeing some more of that. Me and Dread plan to do more of them. Me and Scar plan to do some more bold knob stuff together. Um, I know Dim and Dread have got some ideas for projects they want to work on. Um, we've just recently had the Odd Boys episode, which was fantastic, fantastic episode, which tied in. I really love that. Um, that tied into the very first War Boss episode where we talked about how we started Orcs. The you know me, Scar, 
Dread and Dim all talked about how we first got into the hobby and how we started our armies and whatnot. And um, yeah, just it, as an example of just ideas that we share, I sort of suggested to to the odd boys that you should do that too because you weren't there back then. But if you you could do a video on that and it ties back into the first one, and then all six of us have shared our story. And uh, yeah, they did a, a superb job of doing that. Um, and it was a really entertaining video. So like, I'm watching the show sometimes as an audience member because I have, if I haven't been on the show, it makes it better for me because I get to sit and watch it with you guys in the premieres and join in the chat, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, absolutely love it, yeah. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, sorry if this feels like a bit of filler content. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully I've kept you interested enough in sort of talking about my co-hosts and stuff and the show. Um, but yeah, we did not want to leave you without any content. The the options were either Sid rushed the hell out of the editing and gave you like a subpar video, or he held off until the next Sunday, um, which left an empty slot. And so, yeah, that's why I'm here. Come on, leave it to me. I've, I've got an idea for something I can talk about and bring some content to the channel. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, guys, stay tuned. Um, Go and check out, please, check out all the other War Bosses channels. Don't just subscribe to this channel. Go and check out the individual channels and check out all the content they've made. Because if you're not, you're going to miss out on some potentially really good content. Um, and share this channel around. We really want to grow this channel now. We really want to... Um, yeah, we really want to grow this channel. You're going to see more stuff. You're going to see battle reports. You're going to see more content coming out and... Uh, there's a lot of ideas behind the scenes cooking for what you know direction we're going to take this channel and you know what we're going to do with it and expand it and stuff. So uh, yeah, share the channel around and let, let me know in the comments. Let me know. I don't know. Let me know who your favourite of the war bosses is. That'll be fun, won't it? Let us know and then and and tell me why it's me. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, this is um, the the lone war boss, the main war boss. The sort of lead singer, if you will, uh, the Big Cheese, aka Big Deal, Six Plus Stevo, signing out. <laughs>